Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video I wanted to talk about if-else statements, but a bit more complex if-else statements so that you can get an idea on how they are used in real life. So if you are not familiar with them at all, like you have never heard of if-else statements, then you should probably first watch my first video of this subject, and I'm going to link it somewhere here, and then you can come back to this video. But if you are already familiar with the very basics of if-else statements, then this video is right for you so that you can upgrade your knowledge. So keep watching. So the problem that we are going to solve in this video is the one that students usually get on their exams a lot. And with the knowledge that you get from this video, you are going to be able to recognize and solve other problems of this type. And also, if you don't want to work with C++, this logic that I'm going to teach you today is going to be applicable in other programming languages as well. So here's the text of my problem, and it says that our user should enter the side lengths of a triangle, so A, B, and C. And after that, our program should write out whether that triangle is equilateral, isosceles, or a scalene triangle. And as you already may know, equilateral triangle is the one that has all three sides of the same length. Isosceles triangle has two sides of the same length. And then scalene triangle is the one that has all three sides of a different length. So the way that we are going to solve this problem is we are going to really visualize the solution for this problem so that you can really understand it. And that is going to be using diagrams. The tool that I'm going to be using for drawing diagrams is called blank diagram. You can use whatever tool you prefer, even pen and paper if you want. And the first shape that I'm going to put to this diagram is going to be this circle shape here. Let's say that it is going to indicate the start position of our program. So here is where our program starts. And after our program has started, what we want is we want our user to enter side lengths of our triangle. And the shape that we are going to be using for that is this funnel shape here so that you can clearly visualize, because of this funnel shape, that something should enter inside it, something should be inputted in your program. And <clears throat> what should be inputted is side lengths, so A, B, and C. And the type that I'm going to be using for these three variables is float. Why float? Well, because the lengths of sides of a triangle can be decimal point number or floating point number. So float. And then let's put this arrow here so that you can oh, so that you can uh, visualize the flow of our program. It goes like this. And then after our user has inputted the side lengths, what we should do is we should determine whether he has entered uh, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, or squalene triangle. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use this diamond shape here which indicates decision in your program. And what I'm going to put inside this shape here is condition. The first thing that we want to check is whether our, whether our user has entered equilateral triangle. So whether these three sides are all of the same length, whether these three variables hold the same value. And let me make this a bit bigger. And inside here, I'm going to say Please check if my A is equal to my B, and also if my B is equal to my C, like this. So let me join these two. And I want to explain two things when it comes to this. First one is this operator here, this AND operator, these two ampersands. This is logical AND operator, and it is used as I'm going to just explain. So this expression here is going to result as true expression only in a situation where this here is true and also at the same time this here is true. So in that case this whole expression is going to result as a true operation. That is the logic behind this end operator. And the second thing that I want to explain is following. So I have said here, please check if my A side length is equal to my B length, and also if my B side length is equal to my C side length. What you have also, what you can also put here is, you can also say A, because we have determined here that these two are 
of the same length. So it really doesn't matter if you put here A or B, whichever you prefer. So in this situation where this results as a true operation, we are going this way. And what I'm going to do when this results as a true operation, as a yes operation, I am going to use this shape here. Let me just rotate it. I really don't see a shape that that is this one. So that's why I'm using this reverse funnel shape and I'm rotating it so that you can clearly visualize something, something that is being outputted from your program. Let me delete this text here and make it a bit wider. And I'm going to put text inside it. And what I want to write out in this situation here, where this results as a true operation, where this condition is fulfilled, is that our user has entered equilateral triangle because all three sides are of the same length. So let me write that out. So in case that this condition, condition here is true, we are going to, to write out to our user that he has entered equilateral triangle. And then let's check the situation where this here results as a no operation. So in that case, we have to, to determine whether our user has entered scalene triangle or a isosceles triangle. And for that, I'm going to be using another of these diamond shapes. So another decision that we have to make, and let's put it here. And, oh no. And the next thing that we want to check is following. So I want to check, when I, once I have determined that my user has not entered all three sides of the same length, I want to determine whether he has entered all three sides of a different length. So I'm going to put inside this shape here another condition. And I'm going to say following. So please check if my A is Oops, if my A is not equal to my B, and also at the same time if my A is not equal to my C, and also at the same time if my B is not equal to my C, like this. So this is the next condition that we want to check, and this operator here is called not equal to operator, and it is really reversed from this equal operator. It has reversed logic. So in this condition here, what we want to check is whether my A side length is not equal to my B side length, and also at the same time whether my A side length is not equal to my C side length, and also whether my B is not equal to my C. And if this here results as a true operation, that means that all of these three side lengths are not equal. They all have the different lengths. So in that situation, we are going to go this way. And we are going to write out, let me copy this shape. And here I'm going to say, please write out my user that he has entered a triangle that has all three different side lengths. And that is going to be our scalene triangle, like this. <clears throat> Okay, so in the situation where this here results as a true operation, it means that all of these three are of a different length, and we write out to our user that he has entered scalene triangle. And then the situation where this here results as a no, because we have previously determined that these three are definitely not of the same length, and then we have in this condition here determined that these three are also not of a different length, what is left is that the two of these two of these three sides are going to be of the same length. And that is going to be the situation where we write out to our user. Well, I can copy this. And we write to our user that he has entered isosceles triangle. So let me write that out. Okay. So these three are three potential endpoints of our program, so three potential solutions to our problem. And after we write out to our user this or this or this, 
I'm going to really put this one diamond shape just to indicate that our decision has now come to an end. We have solved this problem and we are going to join these pads in this shape here. So I'm going to put this and this like this. So now after we have decided whether, whether it's an equilateral triangle or scalene or isosceles, I can now say, say you can resume the execution of my program normally. So whatever I put after this shape here, it's going to be executed in either this case or this case or this case. And what is going to be happening after the shape here is just stop. So our program is going to stop, but you can put a lot of code here if you need to. So I'm going to say stop. And let me delete this really, I don't need it. Okay. Let's explain one more time this diagram. So after our program starts, our user should enter A, B, and C, which represent side lengths of a triangle. And I have used this float shape since, since those side lengths can be uh, decimal point numbers. And after our user has entered that, we come to this decision point here. And what we want to decide here is first thing we want to check whether all of these three variables are of the same value. So whether he has entered three same lengths for a, a triangle sides. And in case that this here results as a true operation, we are going this way and we write out to our user that he has entered equilateral triangle. And after that, we go this way and our program stops. In the situation where this here results as a no operation, we want to check something else. So we are going this way and we come to another decision point. And here we want to decide whether our user has entered a triangle that has all three different side lengths. So after we have checked that they are not equal, we want to check whether all of three variables are of a different value. And in case that this condition here results as a yes operation, that means that he has entered scalene triangle. But in case that this here results as a no operation, we can now clearly say that he has entered isosceles triangle because we have checked here that these three sides are not the same. And we have checked here that these three sides are not different. So all of them are not different. And that means that two of them have to be equal. And in that situation, we go this way and we write out to our user that he has entered isosceles triangle. And now we can go this way and you can see that in this situation as well, our program stops. Here I have opened my flowchart and my Visual Studio so that we can just translate this diagram into our C++ code. So the first thing here is our user enters our A, B and C side lengths. So let's declare a three variables of type float and let's call them A, B and C. And now I'm just going to write out a message to my user so that he knows what he should enter. So let's say C out and please enter A and then B and then C like this. And then let's use our C in command so that he enters his values. Okay, let's say first thing that our user uh, enters is going to be stored inside my A variable. After that, what he enters, please store that inside my B variable. And then the third value that he enters is going to be stored inside my C variable. So now that we have entered our side lengths of a triangle, we come here. So to a decision point, and we said that we represent this with if else statement. So I'm going to write here if, and then inside these parentheses, I'm going to say this condition here. So Please check like this. Please check if my A is equal to my B and then also check is my B equal to my C like this. And if this, this here, this expression here results as true expression, I'm going to execute one block of code. And that block of code is going to be this one here. But if this expression here results as a false expression, Okay, I am going to execute another block of code and that block of code we represent with our else statement like this. Okay. And then let's write this yes situation. So let's write here 
see out equilateral triangle. So like this. Oops, you should put that not in a quotation marks. Okay, so in this situation where these three side lengths are equal, we write out to our user that he has entered equilateral triangle. But in the situation where this here results as false, we have this else block to execute. And let's find out what is inside our else block. So it is this code here. And that is another if else statement. So this if else statement, statement is really nested inside this one here. So it is nested inside this else block. So here in these brackets here, we are going to put another if else statement. So let me write out if, and then inside these parentheses, we put our condition from this decision here. So from this diamond shape here, and I'm going to write out, so if check if my A is not equal to my B, and then is my A not equal to my C also, and then is my B not equal to my C. So in this condition here, we check whether all of these three variables have different values here. And if they do, if this condition results as a true expression, I'm going to write out, let me just copy this, and then we are going to adjust it. I'm going to write out that my user has entered a scalene triangle, as you can see here. So when this goes in a yes way, we write out that message. So if this results as a true, we write out that our user has entered scalene triangle, but if this here results as a false, then we are going to write out that our user has entered isosceles triangle. And let me copy this, like this. Okay, so we have nested this if else statement inside this else block. So this if else statement is going to execute only in a situation where this here results as a false, false expression. So this code here, if you find it a bit unreadable, I want to show you one trick, so one rule that you can really follow, and that is if you have only one command under this if or else statement, you don't need to use these brackets. So you don't need to say that you are going to execute a block of code since you are not, you are going to execute only one command. So you can really delete the, this here, like this, and then also here, since we have only one command, both here and here we can delete these brackets here, like this. Okay, so now this code is a bit easier to read. Okay, now, as you can see from this diagram here, it is literally a translation of this here and vice versa. So this code here is a translation of this diagram here. And what it means is when our user enters three values for our sides of a triangle, first we are going to check whether uh, all of these three sides are equal. If they are, I'm going. our program is actually going to say that our user has entered equilateral triangle. But if this here results as false, then we are going to our else block. And then inside that else block, we are going to nest another if else. So we are going to check another condition. We are going to uh, execute this if else here and this if else here is going to check following so it is going to say please check if all of these three variables are different values so if all three sides of a triangle have different lengths and if they do we can say that that is a scalene triangle but if they don't then since we have already checked that they are all that all of them are not equal and also we have checked here that all of them are not different, we can say now that definitely two of these variables are equal. And that means that our user has entered isosceles triangle. And that is the program that we had here. Okay, so I hope you liked this video. And if you did, this is a strong call to subscribe to my channel and to share it with anyone else who would like to learn programming. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.